Back in the fall, we got a call from our friends at Yamaha about an exciting new product they've had in development that was now ready to go to market. Some of you may remember the Superjet from back in the day. The original Superjet was launched in 1990 with a 633cc, 50 horsepower, two-stroke engine capable of 38 miles per hour. The Superjet is back, and we got the opportunity to go play with one, as well as the brand new Wave Runner VX Cruiser HO. It was a late season invitation, but one we simply couldn't pass up. It is October 15th. It's cold. It's cold. It's a high of 12 Celsius, 53 Fahrenheit. We have two brand new 2021 Yamahas. This is the big news, really. It's the new Superjet. What do you think we can expect with this? Is it going to be too heavy to run? Kawasaki did this a few years ago, and theirs is fairly heavy. It's 575 pounds. This thing is only 375, significantly lighter than the competition. And it's got L mode, too, for a guy like me. That's right. We've heard top speed is 54 miles an hour. Yikes! But in L mode, it restricts it to 40, which is probably pretty good because it'll be less sensitive on the throttle. So we decided to have a little gentlemanly competition to put these toys to the test. We are going to set up a figure eight course and see who can do the most laps in five minutes. The winner will, of course, get bragging rights and a shiny new nickel. It's a bit bumpy out there. It's freezing cold. Our biggest challenge is going to be staying warm. I'm not that confident. I've never ridden a stand-up PwC before. Rock, paper, scissors, who rides this first? For sure. All right. One, two, three. Oh, oh. looks like you're first, Blacher. To set the stage, we cruised the old president out and anchored it as a home base, and then dropped a couple of buoys in to mark the course. I have a hose-fitting adapter for the galley sink, which has hot water. So if I get too cold, I'm going to dump hot water inside the wetsuit. Hi. <laughs> People don't usually accuse me of being overprepared, usually the opposite. I rarely check the weather. I'm always underdressed. But I knew what we were doing today, and I knew it was going to be cold. So I got a lot of rubber, extra jacket. I got extra socks and underwear. And my ace in the hole, this hot water bottle I found. I've never ridden a stand-up before. And I'm a little scared, but I got to beat Blade here. I was a bit envious of Drew on the VX. Super jets have no neutral or reverse. Once you hit the start button, it's go or get wet. I got to drive the Super Jet out to the course for a little extra time on the machine. And little does Drew know, I actually got out for some practice yesterday after picking up these PWCs from Yamaha. And this thing was a blast. <laughs> Superjet has been completely redesigned. New hull, new deck, new pump, new pole, and of course, a new engine. Now powered by Yamaha's three-cylinder 1049cc four-stroke TR1 engine, which first showed up in VX models back in 2016. And there you have it, a four-stroke stand-up. Yamaha does not publish horsepower, but most estimates are in the 100 range. Regardless, it is enough for a top speed of 54 miles per hour. Not that I went anywhere near that speed. Like all Yamaha boats, fit and finish is superb, and there are a ton of little improvements derived from years of racing. For one, there is a digital fuel gauge, finally. The lightweight pole has a built-in pin that holds it up when you want to pull the cowl. There's even a divot in the tray to help with reboarding. All that's missing is a flashy graphics package. The problem with emission-based projects, they often spoil the fun. I was worried that the new four-stroke engine might ruin the Superjet experience. If the engine was too heavy or the boat too big, it might feel like a tank. But I must say, Yamaha really nailed this one. The new Superjet is incredibly nimble. But more than that, once you get it leaned over, it really digs in and allows you to carve a turn like a slalom skier. It's an incredible feeling when you get it just right. Once on plane, however, they are more stable, at least in a straight line. And the hull does a surprising job of absorbing choppy water. The tricky part to riding a stand-up is turning. Like a motorcycle, you have to tip them over, either by pulling on the bars or steering in the opposite direction. Too much and you end up in the drink. Not enough and you end up in the drink. 
but once you get it leaned over, you can pour on the throttle. With a little practice, combine those three things just right, and this watercraft will turn on the proverbial dime. Yet it is still stable enough to go for a leisurely ride. Stick around as we find out once and for all who can do the most laps on the Superjet in the cold. Yamaha gave us two new PWCs to play with, a 2021 WaveRunner BX Cruiser HO and a 2021 Superjet stand-up PWC. Even though it was the end of October and bitter cold, we could not pass up the opportunity to play with these new water toys. To make things interesting, Drew and I decided to stage a little competition to see who could do the most laps on the Superjet through a figure eight course in five minutes. It's a matter of staying on and staying warm. Although we are nice and protected in here, when you get out there, there's that breeze and it is, uh, it's tough. Oh yeah, with the stereo, <laughs> it's gonna be really tough. I was first up on the Superjet, but not before filling up. Filling up what, you might ask? My wetsuit. This is hooked to the hot water tank, and I have all three wetsuits on. You got three oh. wetsuits on? The idea with the Wave Runner was to distract the other rider with lousy music played over the new integrated marine stereo system while making waves on the course. I found a nice song to distract John. <laughs> seemed to have his figure eights under control, I thought I'd dive a little deeper into this brand new VX Cruiser HO. On a water test, you don't normally get three different kinds of water. On the right out, it was white caps, but it got nice and calm in the bay by the princess. I was blown away by how well this VX handled in a wide variety of conditions. This year, Yamaha took its high-performance, lightweight Nano XL hull from its Race Ready GP series and put it in the VX. With a little more weight than its racing counterpart, the VX was surprisingly quick and incredibly responsive. I could lock right in tight to the buoy without spinning out or aspirating the jet. Key for ripping tight figure eights on the VX is the new seat profile, which is an inch and a half narrower than before. And that little bit really lets you grip the machine with your knees while getting right up over the bars to dig into those tight turns. And under the seat, Yamaha's 1.8 liter four-cylinder high output engine is a beast the most displacement in any PWC engine on the market and a crazy amount of horsepower in a wave run for a straightaway top speed of 65 miles per hour. And if you're spending a whole day out on this thing, Yamaha's expanded the storage under the hood, under the seat, and even in the watertight glove box, which has LED lights, USB and 12 volt power, and a pocket for your cell phone, which hooks right into those waterproof speakers. Speaking of which, I've got to get back to annoying John. When it was time to change rides, you could really see the stability of the VX. We were both on the same side of the boat, and it wasn't even close to flipping over. But it didn't take me long to get wet once I mounted the Superjet. And it didn't get a whole lot better from there. As with a lot of things, it's a great idea to use the buddy system, and thankfully John was there to drag me back to the Wave Runner every time I fell off. The jet drive system of both machines is actually really safe. So dragging Drew back to the Superjet each time was pretty easy to do. At one point, I'd fallen off so many times I forgot to put the lanyard back on. So after my next fall, the Superjet idled away like a lost sheep. Luckily, Cowboy John was close by to lasso the Superjet and ride it right back to me. I hope you got that on film. I don't know if you can tell, but this was the first time I'd ever ridden a stand-up. So stance was a big thing to figure out. Whether it's side by side or completely sideways like a wakeboard, or like I found, staggered like a slalom skier was most effective for me. And after all that, I finally made a figure eight lap on my feet. All it cost me was my ego and a pair of shades. God, I hate losing to John, especially after I found out what a cheater he is. And I have all three wetsuits on. You got three wetsuits on? And then John hopped back on the super jet and did some laps around us, just to rub it in a little more. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank God for that. You ain't eating if you ain't cheating. <laughs> I wasn't as cold as I thought I'd be. These wetsuits are friggin' awesome. The Superjet was actually fairly easy to ride. 
speak for yourself. I spent more time swimming. <laughs> but the good news is I wasn't cold either. The blood was flowing. Forget the gym membership. Just get a super jet and spend an hour a day on it. You're going <laughs> to lose weight like crazy and build muscle mass. I feel like I did 15 pull-ups, which I've never done in my life. So maybe <laughs> I should hit the gym. The other big surprise for me was the VX hull. Around the buoys, you could put it within an inch and just go right around the buoy, lap after lap. It doesn't spin out. It just hooks up and turns. I love that about that boat. And that's that GP hull on that VX. The Superjet, I'll have to give it another shot, but uh, it was a fun day. Rock, paper, scissors, who gets to drive it back in the big waves? I don't know if I'll get back before nighttime if we go back, so uh, I'll leave that one up to you. Call it here, you know, <laughs> <all right. laughs>